I'm George Russell, which you probably already knew. I'm going to show you some things you can do to take care of your plantar fascia and your Achilles tendon, which I view as part of the same problem. It's a problem in a chain of tissue that starts up here in your thigh, goes all the way down like this, and comes all the way to the base of your toes. A problem anywhere in that chain is a problem everywhere in that chain, and what you want to do is find the spot that's not the injured spot that's got a problem and set that problem to rights, so and then you'll probably find that you've taken stress off that area and it can heal more efficiently. <clears throat> so we're going to start with a calf stretch. The calf muscles are big, the biggest muscular element in the chain. And we're going to start with a stretch like this. You're going to come to the wall. Your feet will be parallel but not in line. And you'll bend your front knee and you're just going to ground that back heel so that uh, your muscle can relax. The important thing here is to release the muscle, not to force it to stretch. Anything you're doing where you're forcing is probably going to make your problem worse. So I'm really trying to relax my heel down and to think of the whole calf, the, the tension kind of washing down through my calf into the tendon, down through the heel and back and down into the floor. So I'm gonna relax there for a while. Then I'm gonna turn my leg in and out. I'll actually do this on the other side, it'll be easier to see. I'm gonna turn my leg in and then I'm gonna turn my leg out. When I turn my leg in is where I feel the most tension and if I then focus on it, try to really ground the heel, that spot comes even more into focus. And it's a spot that's very specific, it's right here. You want to find a spot that's tensest because generally when we stretch, the stretch gets absorbed into the areas that are already long and the areas that are tight never get addressed. So you want to find that point and then release it. To release it more specifically, I'm going to come to the table here. I've isolated the point. I know that it's right, right there. Here's where the Achilles tendon actually starts, though usually the pain is here. So it's right near the start of the Achilles tendon. I'm going to put this ball right underneath it. The reason I have the ball on a towel is that towels hold their shape, and so it helps to, to put the tension, or put the ball directly into the spot where there's tension and hold it there. Especially if you're doing this on a bed or something, you're going to want that towel. So I'm having my leg there, and I'm focusing on releasing around the ball. I'm not pushing into it. Anything that you force is going to lead to more tension and ultimately to more pain, in my view, with very few exceptions. So I'm not getting as much uh, stretch there as I'd like to, so I'm going to noodle around till I, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit more intense, but not too intense. If I want even more intensity, I'll cross the shin over that leg because it just increases the weight going down through the ball and therefore how much the ball is pressing up into the muscle. So I can stay there for a while, and of course I'm going to breathe, because without breathing people die. And now I'll take my leg off that, and I'm going to test whether the stretch did any good by going back to my stretch on the wall, in the position that where I found the tension, which was turned in. So I'm going to come here, and yes, the, that spot is no longer talking to me, instead I'm feeling it sort of distributed in the muscle, and that's very good news, because it's those small, tight spots that are usually... Uh, most connected with the pattern of pain. We want to get those other parts too, but, but having gotten the spot is the most important thing of all. Now a lot of people are really interested in rolling muscles, and I don't tend to be a fan of it because I think it tends to be too harsh. <clears throat> but if it's not like you couldn't use it, and if you use it, you want to not go to the point where you're uh, saying to yourself, no pain, no gain, and wincing and trying not to wince. You want to just use the roller to get into the spot that feels tensest, and for me I found a spot right there, and then I just want to relax onto the roller. Again, if I wanted to, I could put a little more weight here, and I certainly could roll over the spot if there's more like a string of pain. To be perfectly honest, that was too much force for me, so I'm going to probably want to go more at this amount of force. So <clears throat> do what you will with the roller, but my... Uh, general belief is, in any cases, if you're doing it so much that you have to persuade yourself not to tense up, you're actually doing too much and it's going to lead to more tension and probably to more pain. Okay, so another uh, thing I can do where I can use the roller is, but I'll show you another way also, is this one which puts some pressure right into the Achilles tendon. So this would be something to do if you have, um, your problem say is more in the plantar fascia because if you stretch the Achilles tendon, if you release 
stretching isn't what you do on Achilles tendon, but if you release the calf muscle, uh, often that will take stress off the plantar fascia. So I'm gonna place this right on my Achilles tendon, and then I'm gonna sit on it so it's right in front or below my sitting bones. And I'm just gonna hang out here. This is here because often when people have their feet completely flat, it will make them tense. And of course, you could have a bigger uh, towel here. So I'm just gonna sit like this for a while, and again, I'm gonna focus on releasing the muscles of my calf. So that's not usually what we focus on. Usually we don't pay attention to that, but that's what I wanna focus on here. And this can be really powerful and helpful. Now, if by contrast, I have an Achilles tendon problem, then of course I'm not gonna put the pressure right on the Achilles tendon. In that case, and I'll now demonstrate this with a towel, because you can do this whole thing with a towel. You don't need special equipment. I'm gonna take the roller or the towel further up towards my knees, and then I'm gonna hold it there while I bend my knees. Actually, I'll do this a different way. I'll start with this. Now, I'm gonna have my toes tucked under if I can, and I have the towel there because most people can't do it with their toes completely tucked under, and that towel could be even bigger. So the, the base of my toes is actually against the roller and not against the floor. And now, I'm gonna bend back like this. So now the force is going through the Achilles, I mean the uh, calf muscle and not through the Achilles tendon. Of course, if this hurts, stop immediately. But this is something that might help you because it gives you a stretch in the plantar fascia and it also gives you a stretch in the calf muscle. Both those things are gonna take stress off the Achilles tendon. All right, let's move on. Another thing you can do that will be very helpful is to release the muscles, the plantar fascia, the parts of the plantar fascia that are tight, but not your injury and also getting to the joints in your foot if you can. So when you look down at your feet, you should see the knuckles in the ball of your foot. You should see an indication of the knuckles. You maybe see that here there's no, there's form there, but there's nothing to see there. And that's because in me, those, those bones are a little too close to the floor and that can kind of really affect the plantar fascia. So I'm gonna to come to that point that I just isolated. And I'm gonna put the ball under the ball of the foot and then I'm gonna just try to relax my toes and let the ball bring the knuckle up towards the ceiling. If I wanna put more pressure on it, then I can bend one or both knees, especially bending the front knee. And of course, I'm gonna breathe while I do this. I'll breathe and release my foot so that the ball can come up into it. This is a squash ball, and that's what I think for most people is best to use. It's the smallest ball you can get commercially that I know of. So that's that. But I can also do this for points in the plantar fascia, which is, starts here and goes to all five toes. And if you have plantar fasciitis, you don't need to tell you that because usually the pain is really hideous right here. But if you can find points in the plantar fascia that are tight but not tender, I found one there, then you can put the ball under that point. And again, you're just gonna relax. You can bend the knee to put more pressure there. You can also move around and find tight points in the muscles under the foot. Here's a big uh, ticket item, a place where there tends to be tightness. And you can just go to any soft tissue in the foot. It could be the plantar fascia, maybe it isn't, it doesn't matter. Anything you can release here is gonna uh, increase the sensation in your feet, which will help. And it's also going to make the muscles uh, act more efficiently and the plantar fascia soften so that the forces can be absorbed through the whole tissue. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna strengthen my foot. <clears throat> To do that, I'm going to do this relatively simple exercise. <clears throat> I'm going to sit sort of forward in a chair, and then I'm going to manspread, if you will. I'm going to let my knees fall out to the side, and you notice that I'm now on the outsides of my foot. So I want to keep the, the outer heel more on the foot than the inner heel, but I want to now send the ball of the big toe towards the heel and towards the floor. So I want to keep my weight on the outer heel, but get this down to the floor and down towards my heel. It looks something like this reaching the ball of the foot down and also back towards my heel. If your foot starts to cramp, of course, it's game over. And I try to get that down before the inner heel has to bear most of the weight. Then I'll come into neutral, relax my foot, and now I'm gonna go up on point. I'm gonna go onto the tips of my toes and draw the tips of my toes towards my heel. Then I'll relax. If you start to get a cramp, game over. So I'll show you that also on this side. I manspread, I let my legs just fall open and my, my weight falls onto the outer heel. Now I'm gonna take the ball of the big toe towards the heel and also towards the ground, keeping my weight on the outer heel if I can. And that shortens the arch and it strengthens the arch muscles. Then I'm gonna relax my foot and I'm gonna draw the bases, uh, the tips of the toes towards the heel. 
also a strengthener for the muscles that go under the foot. So you could do that, I don't know, maybe uh, five sets of 10. The amount of time you spend doing uh, an exercise is really relative to each person and their strength. What you want to do is get to the point where it's a, it's, you feel tired or it's a little hard to perform the exercise. And if that's after two or even one, you've already finished the exercise. If you can do something easily, that's not the exercise for you. Don't, if you can do 100 push-ups, stop doing push-ups. Do the thing where your muscles actually are weak and where you need help. So you can do 100 push-ups, but don't keep trying to do those all day if you know how to do them. And it's the same thing as here. This is, if you find this is really easy for you to do, then you don't need this exercise and you'll find something else. If you want more help, let me know. And if these things help you, I would also appreciate knowing.